Hello everybody, this is Double Wide 6 and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my grinder. I have this Craftsman grinder, it has 8 inch wheels, uh, it works out pretty well for me. However, with the grinder they give you a 12 volt DC light. So what happens is uh, you turn the grinder on and eventually the light bulb starts to warm up. You can see how little that light bulb is there. So I'll turn this thing on and show it to you. And then what you do is you take the light bulb and you got to put it pretty close to where you're working to be able to see anything. So. I just don't understand why they don't make tools like they used to. First of all, the thing is already 120 volts, so why don't they just put a 120 volt light bulb here so that you can see what you're doing? And I don't like the fact that this little light bulb has to wait until the motor gets spinning fast enough until it lights up enough that you can see something. It's just not very well designed. Also, this grinder um, it's the same as a Delta grinder, and I believe it's made in like China or something. And uh, you know, they, you know, I understand they're trying to make it as cheap as possible so that they can sell it for a lower price, um, which is good. You know, it kind of keeps the price low, um, but the quality is just not there. Let's take a look at another grinder that I have. All right. This grinder here is a Van Dorn. It was made by the Van Dorn Tool Company in about 1940. Um, you've probably never heard of Van Dorn. I think they were bought out by Black & Decker later. So uh, this grinder was built in an era when things were built properly. And you could see it has a 120 volt light bulb on there. So when I turn on this light bulb, not to mention it has a nice brass cover on here. Uh, you can see anything. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn on this grinder and you can see how true this thing spins and how quietly it operates. And it's, it's just solid. It doesn't want to move. So let's turn this one on. Alright. It's a little bit louder than normal because I have a brush installed on it. But you can see that wheel. That thing spins perfectly true every time. You get a beautiful tool when you use this thing. So if you're sharpening chisels, drill bits, whatnot, you're going to get excellent results. You can put the light wherever you want it, and it's just built to last. So if you're going to get a grinder, I would recommend buying a used one, trying to find an old one, and you know, you can get the whole thing, the grinder, the pedestal, the light, all together, used. I think I paid $40 for this grinder as it sits, and I did paint it to make it look a little bit nicer, because it uh, didn't look the greatest, but you know what, it works excellently, and I have no regrets about buying this particular grinder. One other thing to note, the light on this grinder is controlled independently from the grinder itself. So if I want to turn on a light, like for my buffer, um, I could do that without running my grinder. Incidentally, I put a light on my buffer as well. What I used here was just a uh, fluorescent light and I believe I can figure out how to turn this thing on I set this up so I can control the light independently as well and that works quite well um, but I should probably have a shield on the light bulb but this lights missing the shield um, so anyhow what this video is about is it's going to be about how to put a new light bulb on my grinder that I have over here so I'm going to set it up for 120 volt light. So what I have here sitting on the router table is a light. This light's been discarded by someone 
And these old lights that have these flexible necks, they're great for tools. This stand, you can mount right on a tool, and then you can set these lights however you like it. Um, now, there was something wrong with this light, which I fixed. So it has its own independent switches, and they both work. Um, there was a loose connection up in there, and you know I just fixed the light, and I've had it sitting in my garage in case I want to use it for some tools. So this is a good way to get a light to mount right to a drill press or a grinder or a router table or whatever you want. So after I fixed up this light, I was showing it to my wife because uh, I was actually working in the uh, basement and she came down there and uh, you know I said hey look at this light you know it's pretty nice blah 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 and this thing is excellently built it's probably from the early 70s and you know everything inside all the light socket and that I believe are brass and uh, you know it's just built very well and believe it or not my wife really likes this light she thinks this thing's great she's like i can't believe you're gonna use it out on your tools why don't you keep it my mom gave us that antique table it'll go great with that blah 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 and so i'm not going to use this light for my tools we'll probably uh use it on this antique table but i did get a good idea of a way to make a light that's 120 volts so i wanted to share that with you today so here's the little light that I made. First of all, it looks kind of unique. It's controlled by LEDs. I think this thing has something like 42 or 34 LED lights. So all those little lights are there. And I put a switch on the back so you can turn it on and off by the switch. And I've set it up so that you can plug it right into a socket. So uh, there's a regular 120 plug on the end. I watched a video on YouTube from a fellow named um, Poor Old Chap, and uh, he showed on YouTube how you can make a light like this, so if you want to find Poor Old Chap under YouTube, um, I think that you'll like his videos and all the stuff he does, he has some great ideas, and he actually has this light mounted to a little stand that has a, a magnet from a microwave, so he can stick it on the side of a grinder or a drill press. So I'll plug this thing in and show you how it works. So here's the light. On the back I've set it up so that there's a little switch. And if you hit the switch, the light comes on. 120 volts. Real cheap. I got this bulb off eBay. I think shipped to my house and only cost about $4 for the bulb and the shipping all together. So uh, these are nice. Nice and bright. Good work light. Um, they also don't get hot, so you won't have to worry about burning your hand if you're using it. So I, I really like this type of uh, bulb, and I think it's going to be a great setup for uh, any tool. So uh, I'm going to take this bulb, and we're going to mount it on my grinder over there across the shop. So uh, we'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I've done is uh, I've removed the grinder from the stand here and there's a plate on the bottom there's four allen bolts one two three four I'm gonna pull those off and that should expose the wires so at first glance if we take a look in here at the wiring um, there's a whole bunch of wiring going on there's a capacitor in there there's also the switch that controls the grinder and there's that DC wiring that goes up to our light up top so Right here is where our 120 comes in from the wall. So if I tie onto this black wire, which is the hot, and our white common wire right there, um, and since I have a switch that I put on my light that I built, um, I could have the light be hot all the time and just use the switch to keep it in the off position when I'm not using the grinder. So I think that's how I'm going to wire it up so I can just turn on and off the switch at will. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. So here's something else. You know, like I was saying, these grinders are pretty cheap. Um, you know, they, they have three wire nuts, a little bit of tape holding them on. I mean, that's the way the thing's manufactured. 
Uh, you know, I'm just not impressed by that. I'd rather see it more like hardwired with using uh, connections and terminals and things like that. Um, you know, because these things vibrate. Eventually, those could loosen up and pull off. And as you can see, this tape is already coming loose on these uh, wire nuts. So here's the old light. And I'm just going to disconnect the light socket up top here. I'm going to keep this flexible tubing because that's going to allow me to adjust my new light wherever I want. So I'm going to remove this to start and we're going to feed our 120 wire right down this tubing and that will bring it into the wire cavity. So uh, here's the white and black wire that come from the uh, light up top. So we're just going to snip these off and pull the light out the top. So that's snipped off and if we come up top that should allow us to pull these wires right through except it's going to take two hands or a little bit tight. So we're able to slide the light out of there and uh, now I'm going to just loosen up these wire nuts and remove these two wires uh, that black and white that I snipped off. So now all those wires are cleaned up. I put the wire caps back on. Um, I think I might, instead of taping it, wrap some shrink wrap possibly around those wire nuts. Alright, so if we take a look at how the old light attached, it has this threaded piece that ran into the hole. The wires are pushed down the tube here. And then it had this threaded piece that a uh, set screw locked onto. Well, my new light is set up differently. All I have is a wire coming out of there. I tied a knot on the inside so it wouldn't pull out. Um, but we're going to need to devise a new method to attach here. So first thing that we'll do is uh, we're going to cut the plug off this wire. So I have a plug on there and basically we're just going to snip this wire so that there's no longer a plug because we're not going to need it. Some of you guys may be thinking, well why don't you just plug the light in and be done with this. Well the problem with that is number one it takes an extra outlet and number two the way I want to mount this thing with this wire on here I need to run the wire through here. So if I have the plug the wire would have to go out to the side and it it's just not going to mount right and it's going to look like garbage and I kind of want to do it right. So I got my light in the bench vise and I'm just heating up this plastic a little bit and uh, what we're going to do is disassemble the light because I'm going to need to drill a slightly bigger hole where our wire is coming through. So I'm just using a heat gun to heat up this uh, plastic and this is just I don't know if it's called Schedule 40 plastic, that might be a little bit bigger, but it's an electrical plastic pipe. So I'm just uh, heating this up and I'm going to slip apart the light bulb. Hopefully that's hot enough. And I'm just going to pull up, try and get that bulb out of there, but it's going to take two hands. So I've got the bulb loose and I'm just carefully uh, pulling the wire out of here. Um, now that I pulled the plug I can pull it right through this hole. I'm going to drill out this hole a little bit wider and we're going to attach a small pipe to that hole. Alright so now I'm going to drill a hole here just to make it a little bit wider. And that's all it's going to take. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to put a piece of pipe in here, obviously not this big. And the pipe should clamp onto the remaining part of the grinder. So we're going to cut this pipe and fit it in there. Uh, 
Um, something that should just be noted. I didn't make this exactly the same as poor old chap made his. Uh, I used, I soldered these together and uh, basically used my heat gun to heat up this pipe so it would be a really tight fit. And uh, I did not fill mine with epoxy. I just uh, connected, soldered right onto the terminals and then uh, I tied shrink wrap or I put shrink wrap around it um, to keep it nice and safe. So uh, there's no epoxy in there, which is good because I wouldn't have been able to get this thing apart. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the wire that we have cut off here, and I'm going to feed it right back in here and reach in through that hole and pull it out. There we go, we're back together. So we're gonna take our little piece of pipe and the end tail of a file there and I'm just cleaning this up so there's no burrs on either end. And I used a fairly wide pipe, the biggest pipe I could use for this. Um, just so it was easier to fish the wire out of there and there's not gonna be any pressure of the wire rubbing on it because this is plenty wide. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and take this little pipe and uh, we're going to try and pressure fit it into this hole. So we're going to take the end of the wire, feed the pipe through. I tapered the front end of the pipe a little bit. We're going to line it up with that hole and you can see our pipe is just starting to fit in. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to press that in using my vise. So here's the plan. I just want to press this in about a quarter inch. So I'm just going to put this in the vise and uh, try and put some pressure on it to get it to slide in. And I think, yeah, we're going a little sideways. I'm going to have to work on this a little bit to get it in there. So. A new method of attack. We're just going to lightly tap. I drilled that hole just slightly smaller so it would pressure fit the pipe in there. And uh, I think that's in there good. And I can even put epoxy around this to really help hold it. Alright, so we have our pipe connected. It's nice and solid. I didn't epoxy it yet. And uh, I've cut a really sharp angle on uh, our wire and now we're going to feed the wire into the uh, bench grinder here and I'm hoping this goes right in there with no issues so far it seems so good maybe I spoke too soon but we'll see if uh, we can find that in the box down here so the wire did come right through there, so uh, now what we're going to do is uh, tighten up that set screw. Pipe fits right in there, I did check that before I used that pipe. And I'm going to lock the set screw in place. Nice and tight. Oh yeah. And that looks pretty good my friends. So that's on there, now all we have to do is tie the power in at the bottom. Alright guys, so uh, basically now I have my wire from my light running down here. And here's my common wire and here's my hot wire. On my particular plug, um, the, the side that has the ribs on it is the common wire. And this side is smooth, so for the common wire, I'm going to hook it on to the uh, other common wire, this white wire. And I'm going to be using these clips today. These work great. I've showed these in some of my other videos. The nice thing about them is I don't even have to cut this white wire to splice into it. I'm going to take my clip and I can actually open up 
this thing a little bit. The wire will fit right in there. And then I can take my common wire, which is this one with the ribs on the side, and I can actually feed that wire right up in here. And this clip will splice right through both wires. So I'm going to take my pliers, and it's probably a little bit hard to see. I'm going to make sure all my wires are in there in the right spot, and I'm going to push down hard. And basically what I'm doing is I'm driving a clip right through there, and then I'm going to take the end of the cover, and I'm going to snap it. And that's all I have to do. That'll connect the common wire, and I'm going to do the same thing with the black wire. And now we're connecting the hot wire. So I've got my splicing clip on there. And we're driving our metal spike through. That looks good. And we'll close that clip. And that's good. That seals up the wires. There's no loose ends. Um, I wound up taping these wire nuts because uh, I didn't have shrink wrap that would seal on the wire tight enough. So we're all hooked up. Um, I'm going to put the bottom back on the grinder. Alrighty guys, so uh, I mounted the grinder back on a little stand here. And I uh, have it in between two garage doors, which works out pretty well. If you're sharpening anything, like a lawnmower blade, something that's long, you can always stick it out the side if you need to. Um, but anyhow, we got it all back up here. Um, I'm going to plug it in for you. So uh, we'll see what we got. Um, the way it's set up, there's a switch on the back here. This should. All right. We have light. And you can see there's a lot more light than before. Um, and the nice thing about this uh, particular coil on the back is you can aim the light wherever you want it to be. And uh, you're going to have good light when we're working here. And we can turn off the light if we don't want it. And that's my wife paging me. So give me a second. So everything seems to be working good. Uh, I want to make sure that the grinder works. You can see the light stays on there. So that's good. We can turn it how we want. That's good. So I'm very pleased with this. We should be able to turn this off and keep the grinder on. And now I'll turn off the grinder. So uh, I'm double wide six. So I got a whole bunch of uh, repair videos and uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to poor old chap for giving me this idea and this uh, LED light bulb. I like the fact that it doesn't get hot and it's also real lightweight. If it were heavy, this uh, coil on the back would really begin to sag, but this is going to work great for what I'm doing. So uh, special thanks to poor old chap and I'll put a link to uh, his channel on the description of this video so i hope you enjoyed it your comments are welcome and thanks for watching have a great day